tonight. If you were only tonight, then you are to Welcome home. I'm back home in the house of God. One day spent in your house. One day spent in your house. This beautiful place of worship. Be thousands. Be thousands spent on Greek island beaches. Let me tell you why you're here. Why you're here. Good morning. It's good to see you back in the house of God today. Come on, stand your feet. Stand your feet if you can. Put your hands together. Shout it out, we're alive, we're 
Jesus Christ has broken every chain. 
that you are great and you are mighty. We exalt your name above every other. There's no one greater than you. Move in this place today, Lord. You're breaking chains. Shackles are falling. Move in this place. Let us feel your peace and your love.
is greater than all things, greater than all things, great are you,
some noise in this place. Give it your highest and your best. Come on. Don't you feel good? It feels good when you just give your all to the Lord. Listen, it's time for you to greet your brother and sister. Loving God, loving each other. Come on, big hugs. Hi. take up the offering this morning. I'll give you a moment to get back to your seats, your pocketbooks, and your wallets. 1,264 days. Repeat with me. 1,264 days. That's how long I've been praying about something. Should I stop today? Should I give up? Is there an expiration date on prayer? There's also not an expiration date on God. And there is no outgiving God this morning. As we bow our heads and we take up this offering, I ask you to pray with me, Heavenly Father, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you bless this offering. Heavenly Father, bless those that have, those that do not have. Lord, we know we can't outgive you. As David tried, we can't outgive you. You can't be outgiven. Lord, we thank you for the prayers you've answered, those you are about to, and those of us who are learning to be patient, and that your answer might not be our answer. And Heavenly Father, Lord, we take our cares, the desires of our hearts to you. We ask that this offering, Lord, be used to minister, to sow the seed, to grow the harvest, to reap the harvest. Lord, that all will come to know you and none will be left behind. We give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to do uh, Remembered at the River to River on December 15th from 1 to 2. If you want more information, that can be found out at the welcome desk. We're also going to do March to the Manger, December 16th. You do not really have to march. You can walk slowly, it's okay. But we're calling it March to the Manger. It just sounds more important that way. 
We also need volunteers to help set up the angel tree. That's going to be this Thursday at 530 at the Life Center. So we need those volunteers. I also want to let you know that we're having our Christmas dinner today immediately after church. We'll be over at the Life Center. Please come over there and join us for a festive holiday time. There, it's just a good time to be had by all and a good chance for fellowship with one another. And then immediately after the dinner at 2 o'clock, we're going to have dance practice from 2 to 4 here at the church. Pastor Rick always invites us to repeat after him, doesn't he? And I've done that already. And he always invites us, raise your hand if this is applicable to you. And I haven't done that yet. Who would like to dance? Okay, we have a defibrillator. We're going to be okay. No age limits. Come out and dance two to four um, today here at the, uh, at the church for our dance practice. And I just want to say welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm taking longer than usual just because I want to look at the faces. I can't see from way back over there. You look beautiful. Thank you. Merry Christmas. And I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Rick as he brings us the Advent. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here. And more important, I'm glad Jesus is here. Amen. Aren't you glad that he's always an on-time God? Just a couple things real quick before we get to Advent. I, March to the Manger is a special offering that we take up for those that may not know this. And that's, that happens next week. And that's uh, aside from the tithes and offering. That offering is used as outreach. Uh, one year we used it to build a onto church in Trinidad. Another year we used it as a relief effort down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. A year we used it for relief work in uh, Beaumont, Texas with Hurricane Harvey. Uh, this year we've used it in a couple of areas and one just took place yesterday. We were able to, we put together a traveling sound system and yesterday we were able to use it for the first time at the Youth Detention Center in Harrisburg, Illinois and did a Christmas concert there. <laughs> 60 young men that have gotten in trouble at some point or another in their life set in there and I don't know if you've ever been there but the the facility it reminded me of one that I was at in Russia uh, it's a iron door that's locked down that they stay in those units and but they brought them into a gymnasium and I watched those young men touched as the praise team began to worship and they we did Christmas carols and they began to do worship songs and I'm happy to report that when we gave the call for salvation every one of them stood to accept Christ into their life so we're looking forward to mission outreach everybody say I have a mission field you say, well, Pastor, I can't go across the ocean. No, but you can go across the street. Everybody's got a mission field to reach out to. Just as a reminder for the angel tree, if you have any question concerning that, you can contact Nate Clark or Beth Patterson, and they'll have information for you with that. Now, every week for the last two weeks, we've used the Advent to introduce a family that's come to the church over the last year or so and sometimes it actually exceeds that because we've got more families coming than we got candles which is a good thing amen and uh this is a family that's been coming for i'm not sure how long but they they can let you know they've been coming for some time would you please welcome the david davis family as they come today I'm going to read from Isaiah 9, verse 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulder, 
and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from the time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Um, we've been coming here for a year and a half. Um, and uh, I just want to say, you know, we were kind of floundering around. We'd been to different churches and we were looking, we were searching for something. We knew what we wanted. Um, we wanted a church that teaches this that teaches all of this and what it encompasses to be a Christian. We are not wimpy. We are the head and not the tail. Amen. And um, <laughs> your leadership here, our leadership, is amazing. And they lead from the front. And they lead with this. And we just, we thank you. Introduce your family. Thank you. All right, let's give them another big hand. And would you make Eddie Williams welcome as he comes to sing for us right now? Oh, see, I heard it on that side. I didn't hear it over here. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. So, now you're going to let them outdo you. How about everybody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Because he's so worthy to be praised. Amen. I was thinking uh, just the other day, I was thinking about the grace of God. And uh, I tell you, when I think about God's grace, you know, that's unmerited favor. I was chatting with my wife the other day. We were sitting, we were talking, and I, my mind just went to years and years ago, I got hired at Ford Motor Company. And I'll never forget, uh, I was in this long, long line. And the news had gotten out that Ford was going to hire. And I, I remember standing in this, and a friend of mine told me after church on a Friday night, I don't know, if, yeah, it was a Friday night, and he says, hey, you know they're hiring at Ford Motor Company. And I says, really? He says, yeah, you need to go there, yeah. So I went, and when I got there, it was this long line, I mean, unbelievable, at least a block long of everybody just in a, I mean, a thick line, not just single file. I'm talking about a crowd like, kind of line. And so we stood in this long line for the longest, and it was hot out there. It was so hot. So I'm standing up there with a shirt and tie on. So many people had on, you know, shorts and T-shirts and stuff. They was going to apply for a position that's on production. And so I stood in that long line. And when I got in line, uh, you know, and we finally, they opened the doors and everybody filed in. And we start writing down, you know, you know, filling out the applications and things, you know. And so I stood there and I filled my application out and I was standing. And so a lot of people had got ahead of me and finished because they were first further up in line. As soon as I finished the filling out my application, I got ready to walk out the door. And when I got to the door, and I was just standing there, I had on, I guess I had a shirt and tie and dress, you know, and everybody else uh, left. And then when I walked out, I was getting ready and I pushed the door handles down. And when I pushed the whole door handles down, somebody said, sir. I turned around. He says, yeah, come here. So I walked up to the gentleman, and it was a gentleman, had a shirt and tie on. And he says, hey, uh, he says, uh, come up with me. So I went to the back room, and he says, uh, you know, and they had let hundreds of people go. He says, come here with me. He says, um, you know what? Um, you still in school? I had just started Wayne State University. He says, I said, yes. He says, okay. He says, uh, I'm going to give you some. I just gonna, I want you to take a look. Go, go with that guy right there. So this other guy walks up and says, go with him. So I followed this other gentleman. And I'll never forget this long as I live. I'm going I'm to get to the song, I promise. <laughs> They're going to give me the mic after a while. But I stood in this line. And so the gentleman says, hey, just go, uh, go with this gentleman. So I went to the back and I sat down. And he looked at me. And he, uh, you know, he looked at my application. And he looked at me and says, you know what, young man? He says, uh, wow, there's something different about you. He says, you know what? You're going to do something. Something good's going to happen for you, you know. And I just stood there and looked at him and I... You know, I says, wow, this is amazing. So does this mean I'm hired? You know, and uh, sure enough, that day, you know, they hired me. And so I remember going through, all the, you know, after going through all everything that they did, 
Um, and they took me to another room. And they get, go take you through the physical and take you through the physical and go through all that. And I'll never forget this long as I lived. The gentleman looked at me after he went to the doctor, looked at me and says, young man, you're going to wear well. You're going to wear well. And I never forgot that. I never forgot his, that look on his face when he said that. But you know, I, I said all that to say this. That God will give you favor Amen. when you least expect it. God will just open up the windows of heaven and he'll pour you out blessings. You don't have room enough to receive. And there's nothing but his grace. And that's what's just, just to listen closely to the words of this song. Were it not for his grace, where in the world would we be today? Amen. measured out my days. Life left me all alone. In my soul I yearn to follow God, but knew I'd never be so strong. I looked hard at this world to learn how heaven could be gained just to end where I began where human efforts are all in vain were it not for grace I could tell you where I'd be Wandering down some pointless road to nowhere But my salvation up to me And I know how that would go The battles I would fight Wandering down some pointless road to nowhere, my salvation up to me, and I know how that would go. The battles I would face.
aren't you glad for the grace of God? Thank you. I think about where we could have been. How many of you know that God saved you from some stuff? How many of you think that you got what you deserved? Now, if I would got what I deserved, I wouldn't be here right now. Neither would you. But aren't you glad that he reaches beyond that and he gives us what we don't deserve and loves us in spite of what we've done, not because of it? But you understand that it's what's wrong with you that brought you to him. It's not what was right with us. It's what was wrong with us that brought, him, brought us to him. Well, we've been talking about the Advent for the last two weeks, and this week we lit a third candle, and let's take a look and see what that candle represents. joy sometimes it seems to escape us because of what we related to or circumstances that we're going through and i thought about how god has a way of causing joy to find us did you ever notice how god tends to show up at the most desperate times in your life that when you feel alone all of a sudden it, he just changes things and joy comes in where just a few days ago there was no hope at all and i want to show that to you in scripture today if you would go with me to the book of psalms chapter 137 and i want to read verses 1 to 6 before i read it let me tell you what's happened israel god had had fulfilled his word to abraham he made his seed a great and mighty nation it took some time Jeannie, 1,264 days. I thought about how that sometimes it, it may take longer than you want, but it's always better than you believed. He ends up doing it in ways that we can't comprehend or even think of. He told Abraham that, he would multiply his seed as the sand of the sea. And Abraham never got to see it happen, but he knew it would. Are you with me? See, we, we live in a world today that is, and you know, how many of you remember the Polaroids? Man, that was the hottest thing on the market. You remember that? I remember, I, I remember when dad got one and we were out on vacation and he clicked it ripped the picture right out of the side of it peeled it open and the first ones you had to put some stuff on or you'd fade and then he then the, they, they came out with another one where you peeled it off and then you waited and dad was counting 
Okay. And he'd rip it off and there we were. The first time my grandmother saw that. Dad had taken a picture of her. He waited, he peeled it off and he handed it to her. And she looked at that and she didn't know about Polaroids. And she was looking at that. Who, who is that? Well, well, that looks like me. Where did that come from? That's witchcraft. No. <laughs> she didn't say that, but I've been in some countries where they did. <laughs> and that was the biggest thing, man. It was because we, we moved into instant. Everybody say instant. We want instant oatmeal. Instant potatoes. Everybody go. I, I saw when I said instant potatoes, I, I, I saw heads going. Oh, <laughs> there, I, I'm just going to tell you there's something about instant that's just not as good as an old fashioned crock pot experience. Anybody in the house today? Sometimes what we want God to do is just give us, a, I felt it. And then all of a sudden we move from that, but you may have felt it, but it didn't permeate you. It, it didn't soak into you. It didn't get way down deep. And, and so what we need is God to saturate us Amen. with joy. They had received the promise of a nation. They had walked in it. They had experienced it and they rose in power. And then they did something that sometimes we're guilty of. They began to take God for granted. They began to think that they were the reason that they were being blessed. And they got into just a routine of religion instead of a relationship with God. And it cost them. When God took them into captivity, God's plan was never to destroy them, but it was to renew them. How many of you have ever had to get your children's attention? How many of you ever had to have your attention gotten as a child? I remember how a mom would get mine. Any of you ever hear of a switch? You know what I'm talking about? No, well, that only worked. She made me go cut my own one time and I brought her back a twig here beat me to death mom it was uh, honestly I'm not, I'm not making this up i gave her a little stick that i knew was going to break instantly that was a mistake because then she had my brother go get one he brought a tree into the house <laughs> and so it's we we learn from mistakes don't we we ought to and that's what god wanted god never intended and let me just share this with you right now if you're going through something it's not to destroy you. The devil will try and destroy you with it. But you need to understand that the God that you serve is a lot bigger than he ever hoped to be. Amen. And he's got your, he doesn't just have your back. He's got your front and your sides. He's got you covered north, south, east, and west. Amen. And he's going to see you through it, but you've got to walk through it. Now, some stuff, let's be honest, some stuff we go through because of us how many of you have ever done something stupid before point at somebody that did something stupid now, i thought maybe you'd do this and all of a sudden i saw people doing this <laughs> isn't it always something that we can recognize other people's stupidity a lot quicker than we recognize our own and I, maybe that's the wrong word let me let me find a better word we recognize other people's lack of understanding. It's just stupid. It just... And so what, what happens is that then God's got to get our attention because I, look, we, we had a son, we, we still do, son and daughter. They never, I, I mean, they did some things that I wasn't happy with. Not one time did I ever take them, grab them, throw a suitcase full of their clothes in and say, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. I didn't do that. Why? Because I love them. 
You, you need to understand that the love that God has for you is greater than the love that you even have for yourself. Amen. And God's determined to bring you into that place he's promised you. And so when Israel strayed away from God, God allowed them to go into captivity to get their attention. And he got it. Listen to Psalms 137. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yes, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. For those who carried us away captive ask of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. They're carried into captivity and the people that took them there are trying to get them to forget the fact that they're captives and just have a good time anyway. Sing a song of Zion for us. But it was their forgetting God that brought them there. And now they're determined that they're not going to forget God again. They hung their harps in a willow. They wouldn't sing, and, and, and they made statements that if I forget you, Jerusalem, in other words, let me put it this way, if I forget, God, what you've done for me, then let my right hand not work anymore. Let, let my roof cling to the roof of my mouth, or my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I forget what you've done for me, I'm not going there anymore. I want back uh, what God gave me. Uh, I want back what the devil's taken from me. I I want it back. And so they're reaching for it and and joy seems to be eluding them, but there's a secret to joy. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning, the secret of joy. When you're going through something and it seems that it's out of reach and that it's not there, there's something you need to understand about joy. They're going through this. They've hung their harps in the willow and they're saying, we'll never sing. We'll never forget what God did for us. And, and I'm not going to rejoice in the place that I'm at. But then all of a sudden something unique happens in Psalms 126 verses 1 through 6. The psalmist begins to write about God came to rescue them. Listen to the words. When the Lord brought back his exiles to Jerusalem, it was like a dream. Man, is this real? Is this really happening to me? It was like a dream. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. The other nations said, what amazing things the Lord's done for them. Yes, the Lord has done amazing things for us. What joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the desert. Those who plant in tears will harvest with shouts of joy. They weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. They had been in captivity, and God remembered them. Everybody say, God remembers. God God doesn't forget. The only thing God forgets is your sin. The Scripture said that he cast that into the sea of forgetfulness. But he does that when there's godly sorrow. Because the Bible said that godly sorrow worketh repentance. It's not like you can just, let me borrow you a minute, Rick. So, you know, sometimes this is the way we we want to treat God. We say, well, God's going to forgive us. So we, we go, we go, oh, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. You know what I'm talking about? It's like we're slapping God. You know, just forgive me, forgive me. I, I, I told you about I'm, I'm in, an, a, in a meeting and a preacher's preaching and the Lord speaks to me and said, he's going to slap you in the face. God is my witness. He walked down off the pulpit where I was sitting at in the congregation and went, 
I didn't really hit him, folks. He slapped me. He really hit me. Hit me in the face. Do you know the scary thing about that was? If God hadn't warned me he was going to do that, I'm not sure how I would have responded. <laughs> what are you getting at? I'm getting at the fact that it's got to come from in here, not up here. Are you with me? Give him a hand clap. Thank you. It's, it's got to come from inside the heart and not just the head. And so when God visited them, they had literally thought that God had just forgotten them. They talked about it in, in Isaiah when they said that, you know, he, he said, why do you say that my way is hid from the Lord? He, what they were saying was in the 40th chapter, they're saying, look, man, God's not even looking at us anymore. He's completely forgotten us. In a time when they felt most desperate, God set a king on the throne that he had written about 150 years before he's ever sat on the throne. And in the book of Isaiah, I believe it's the 40th or 40, no, it'd be 42, 43, 44. God calls Cyrus by name 150 years before he's sitting on that throne. And he said, thus have I called my servant Cyrus to release my people to go build that temple. And Cyrus, look, if you read your name in a manuscript that had been 150 years old and it gave you your life story, you'd probably pay attention to it. Amen. He released them and they go back and they said, man, I can't believe this. This is like a dream. Have you ever had God do something for you that was just beyond your imagination? I mean, you were just so, so blessed by it. You, you just couldn't believe it. You thought you were dreaming. Think about Peter. He spent, you know, Herod had killed James with a sword. And he saw that it pleased the crowd, so he takes and he arrests Peter and he throws him in jail. It's in the book of Acts, the 12th chapter. He throws him in jail, and when he throws him in jail, he's getting ready to bring him out the next day, and Peter's going to be executed as well. And that night, he's chained between two guards. There are literally 16 soldiers that are guarding him, four quadrants of soldiers that are guarding him, chained between two of them. And an angel shows up right in the middle of all that. You need to understand, it doesn't matter what you're going through or where you're at right now. God can show up right in the middle of it. Right in the... God's not intimidated about your circumstance or your problem or your situation. He doesn't wring his hands and say, oh my goodness, what am I going to do for them? That angel showed up, tapped Peter on the side, woke him up and said, get up, get dressed. And when he got up, the chains fell off of him. Peter thinks he's dreaming. He goes, he walks through... The prison house, doors are opening up on their own accord. And when he comes to himself, he's out in the middle of the street. And he did what any escapee would do. He ran. <laughs> Goes to Rhonda's house. Rhoda's house. Rhonda must have been her sister. Go, go, goes to Rhoda's house. Gets over there. And when she, he gets over there, he's knocking on the door. And they go look at the people. Now, these folks, these faith-believing Bible standing, God fearing men and women had been praying and interceding for Peter. We believe God's going to do it. We believe God's going to do it. When they saw him at the peephole, that, ran, that lady ran back in and said, Peter's standing at the door. And those faith believing brothers and sisters said, No, man, that must be Peter's ghost. He must already be dead. I'm not making that up. See, when you pray for something, isn't it amazing how God works? Because even when your prayer may be struggling, God isn't. Amen. Even when you may be struggling with your faith, God isn't. Amen. And so he answered and they came. And don't you know that Peter had to be happy? I mean, think about the happiest moment you ever were in your life. What was it like? These people are singing and shouting for joy. They're beside themselves. It said it was like a dream. Now, look at this scripture. It said they weep as they go to plant their seed, but they sing as they return with harvest. What's the seed that we're planting? They weep as they plant their seed. Scripture 
talks about the parable of the sower. He went forth and he sowed some seed. It's the Word of God. What you do with the Word of God will have a tremendous impact on your life. Well, Pastor, I just never read it. Well, maybe that's why you're in the mess you're in. I just never look at the Word. You've got to get it in you. He said he would bring all things to remembrance, but he's not going to bring something to remembrance that you didn't get in you to begin with. And so you go forth weeping and sowing that seed, trusting God. And in the book of Isaiah, he said that his what? That his word doesn't return to him void, but it accomplishes what it was set forth to do. So how does his word return to him? When we declare it, when we proclaim it, when we stand in the gap and make up the hedge, when we've got children that are howling at the moon on Friday and we stand up and say, in the name of Jesus, you promised me my seed. You said that you're going to bring them from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I stand on that promise that my house is going to be saved 1,264 days. I don't care how long it takes. He's an on-time God. He may not do it when you want it, but he's right on time. He's right on time. When we were, I'm about to get ahead of myself. I got excited. You've got to let God do it. How many times have we gotten in the way of God? How many times have we tried to give God a hand? You know, you really need to get straight with God. I've been praying for you. I pray he convicts your old sinful heart. I can promise you that that's not going to draw anybody to you. Or we act like we are better than everybody else. Praise God. I know what I'm talking about. I was around this stuff. Praise God. Brother, it's so good to see you. Well, that's not what they told me you said (laughs) in that board meeting. (laughs) Do you understand? God's just looking for you to be real because he wants to be real with you. So when we get transparent with God, I'll never forget. I went to Trinidad. You ever been had before? I had a big group, well, not a real big group, I think maybe 15 people going to Trinidad with me, and I was trying to set up, you know, it was the first time I was always so mission-minded, you know, and project-oriented, and and I realized, and my wife was telling me, you got, you you know, you need to lighten up a little bit, so I'm going to do a little side excursion, let them see some things. She's laughing because she knows what happened. So I set this up, man. I tell everybody, I've got it set up. We're going to go down. We're going to get on a glass bottom boat and go down. And there, there, there's manatee in there. And, there, you know, and it's going to be great. And, and so we get to the place for the glass bottom boat. It was fiberglass. I kid you not. I looked at the guy and I said, you said this was a glass bottom boat. He said, it is. It's fiberglass. We go down the middle of a bayou. I don't know if they got them in Trinidad, but that's what this looked like, man. There are trees growing up, hanging out, crabs, hundreds of crabs crawling on on top of these trees. There's alligator in these waters, and we're going down through there. And I got women with me that are wrapped around each other like this. (laughs) The boat's leaking. We get ready to go back. The guy literally looked at me and said, oh, it's a good thing to shore right up there. He said, three more minutes, we're underwater. <laughs> that wasn't exactly what it was cracked up to be. See, the devil will always paint you a picture. I said, don't worry about this. I've got another one planned. Don't worry about this. We're going to go see the mud volcanoes. I'm going to redeem myself. We travel three hours across the island to see these mud volcanoes. 
Well, actually, before the mud volcanoes, we went to see the tar pits. They were one of the leading uh, exporters of tar. We, so we get ready to go see the tar pits. I said, it's going to be okay. We're going to see the tar pits. We drive about two and a half hours to the tar pit. Get to the tar pit. I get out. All I see is a field. I said, where's the tar pit? They said, right out there. I said, what? Yeah, right out there. I said, are you kidding me? I said, no. And so we walk out there, and, and there's water. It's kind of like a swamp thing. There's water out there. And, I'm th- and, and I look down, and I'm looking through this water, and I see some gunk. And I reach down in the gunk and bring it up. You know, when it's under the water, it doesn't stick to your hand. But nobody told me that when you bring it up out of the water, it's like you stuck your hand in a bucket of tar. And I brought my hand up out of the water, and you know, under the water, I was playing with it. Oh, that's so neat. Oh, that ain't. And so now I'm trying to get this mess off my hand, and we, you know, and, and, and we got, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. We're going to the mud volcanoes. Oh, thank God I'm going to go to the mud volcanoes. We get to the mud volcanoes, and we go up, we walk. We drove like another 45 minutes an hour to get to the mud volcanoes. We get out, and we go walking up there. This is where the mud volcanoes are, folks. You're really going to enjoy this. This is where the mud volcanoes are. This tall. God is my witness. This tall, and it's going bloop, bloop, bloop. I turned around and looked at Pastor Tony and said, tell me you're kidding me. Tell me you did not say this was going to be a great trip. Isn't this wonderful, everyone? Because no matter what you're going through, you can't ever let them see you sweat. You ever have a day like that? This didn't happen over the process of months. This happened over one day. I'm just telling you that sometimes things don't turn out the way you expect. And if you're not careful, you'll let that situation rob you of your joy. But there's a secret to joy. And Nehemiah reveals the secret. See, they left. Psalms 126, they were rejoicing because the king said, you can go home. And they went home. But when they got home, things weren't the way they were when they left. And so there's sometimes weeping involved as you're planting. And they were trying to build a new city and get everything ready and at the end of that journey, when they finally got the wall built and they had the gates placed and then they brought out the word and started reading the word of God and everybody started crying. Why? Because they realized how far they were from keeping that word. But Nehemiah steps in and he said, don't cry. Do you understand something about God? He knows we need him. He knows that there are times that we mess up. And so he makes a way for us. And Nehemiah looked at them and he said, don't, don't weep because this day is holy to the Lord. Don't weep. Don't, don't, don't let this get in your spirit and rob you. He said, you, you go your way and you, you, you prepare for those that have had nothing. And you eat the fat and you drink the sweet. What's he saying? You take some joy with you uh, on your journey uh, so everybody else will know how good God is. Uh, don't let it get you down. Uh, don't let it take you out because the joy of the Lord is your strength it's not about the joy of my circumstance or the joy of my situation it's the joy of knowing that God is going to rescue me from it all when we get our focus on him that last verse Or that one verse said, those who plant in tears will harvest 
with shouts of joy. That's what he's telling them. That's what he's getting them ready for. You, you, you need to shout it out. You need to let him know. First Peter 1 and 8 says, you love him even though you've never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. <laughs> uh, when I got saved, they thought I flipped out. I am not kidding you. Man, they, they, I, I had friends come up and ask me because they knew what I, I, I was like before. And they said, what happened to you? What, what, what did you do? What, what happened to you? And I sat him down and I'd run around with this guy. I said, let me tell you what happened to me. And I got just a little ways into it. And he started going, oh, no, 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 no. That's all right. That's all right. No, no, no. I'm, I, I want to tell you. I want you to know because it's inexpressible joy. Everybody say inexpressible. Amen. Tongue had not, I had not seen nor ear heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. Those things that God has prepared for those that love him. It's joy on. Oh, yeah. You ever see somebody saw something and they're trying to tell you and <laughs> I kid you not, man, my sister, <laughs> we went fishing one time. We were coming back. I don't think my sister even saw it. She just heard it. Snake. She went running all the way back. I said, what happened? She went, oh, I was a little bitty kid, little bitty. I like probably four years old and my older brother stood behind a curtain in the house and when I walked by he went Ooh, and he made that curtain go up I went running into the living room looked at dad and I'm like, dad went over there Daryl what are you doing about giving him a heart attack Daryl It was unspeakable. What not joy. But think about it. There have been a lot of things that have been unspeakable for us, haven't there? There's been grief. It's been unspeakable. Disappointment. That's been unspeakable. But God said in the midst of all that, I want to give you some joy that's unspeakable. I want to give you some joy that is so good. It'll make you forget about what you've been through. Amen. How many of you women in here ever had a baby? Wave your hand if you ever had a baby. If I see a guy's hand go up. Hold, hold your hand up a second if you ever had a baby. What's the first thing they do when the baby's delivered? Most of the time, first thing that happens when the baby's delivered, what do they do? They do what? Huh? No, 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 no. They quit smacking babies a long time ago. There's a law against that. <laughs> What's the first thing? What usually first thing they do is what? Huh? I can't understand a word you're saying. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Everybody look up here. I'm going to set you straight. <laughs> usually one of the first things they do when the baby is born is they take the baby and they set the baby on mama. How come? Because mama just been through so much pain that mama's ready to take that kid out. But when she sees him, see, she's been going through pain for something she hasn't been able to see. She's been experiencing turmoil, for something that she couldn't hold. But in the moment that she goes through the worst pain of her life, they present the child and something happens. And in an instant of holding that baby, tears turn to laughter. And she forgets the struggle she went through to get there. 
God's trying to birth something in us. He's trying to, there's something kicking around inside that he planted in there, and he's trying to get you to push. Everybody say it with me. Push. 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 Pray until something happens. Push. 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 When our child was born, which one was it? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. The baby came out. And when the baby came out, we were holding the baby and having a special moment. And I said, they have your nose. Bethany, they have your nose. No, she said it was smashed. But I said, I said she's got your nose. And she looked, oh, he, he's, got, he's got your eyes. And so you start identifying things that you can relate to to that child. You didn't push for nothing. You haven't been through it for nothing. God's going to let you relate it to somebody that's experienced the same thing. You haven't been through the wilderness just to get blisters on your feet. You haven't seen the backside of a desert just to get thirsty. Amen. He's doing something in you so you can do something for somebody. Would you stand with me? I want to end with this. When we went to, yesterday we went to the uh, detention center and we got over there and I had just a, a few minutes to minister. Man, it was, it was, I mean, it was a full day. We started at like nine o'clock that morning and I think I got back to the church I, uh, when Mike and I were un unloading, got back to the church maybe about seven o'clock that evening and it had been a full day. But as strange as it sounds, I was energized. I'd found some strength that I didn't know I had. <laughs> Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And I got joy when I saw those boys worshiping God. I got joy when I saw their response to this illustration. I talked to them and I said, do you ever have someone that, do you ever struggle with somebody believing in you? Do you ever have people just not believe in you at all? Jesus did. His own family didn't believe in him. His brothers told him, if you're who you say you are, go show yourself to the world. But Jesus didn't run off and hide in a corner someplace and have a pity party. Why? Because Jesus believed in himself. Well, how could he believe in himself? Because he remembered who his father told him he was. We forget who we are. We forget who God said we are. And we let somebody else identify us and because of that we struggle everybody say we struggle and so we go to God but we come up empty we feel like look my my life has just been a big blank I'm I'm nothing I'm I'm nobody I've, I've got nothing to live for I've got nothing to strive for I've got nothing going on in my life but if you take time to sow some seed if you take time just to pray a prayer or two, you might discover that all of a sudden you begin to see that life isn't what you thought it was. That where there had been just blank pages, now something's starting to happen and you begin to anticipate that maybe God's got something going on for your life after all. I mean, I can't make it quite all out. It's just a sketch right now. But then if you begin to worship, everybody say worship. What happens when you worship? Apparently nothing. <laughs> when you worship, 
Doesn't it make you feel better? <laughs> Doesn't it make you feel better? I never forget, man, I, was, I had a splitting headache. I went to church. This has been years ago. I had a splitting headache, man. I think I was running a fever. I went to church, sat down. They started worshiping, you know, and they was getting with it. And I hate to admit it, but I was sitting in my seat going, God, I wish they'd quit. <sighs> Music's pounding my head. Oh, I, why can't they just be quiet? What? This would be a good time for silent night. <laughs> just felt, you know, it's just pounding. You ever have God speak to you? You ever have God get on to you? <laughs> I promise you, God is my witness, man. All of a sudden I heard in my inner ear, in, in, in my spirit, I heard these words. Get up off your seat, stand on your feet and start worshiping me. I didn't argue with that, man. I jumped up. I was afraid lightning was coming. I, was, I jumped up. I threw my hands up, started worshiping God. You know what happened? I got healed in the middle of worship. Got healed. I, I got my focus off of my problem. I got it on worshiping God, and it turned my circumstance around. If you begin to worship, if you, I'm not saying after everything gets right. I'm saying while everything's going wrong, worship God anyway. When everything seems to be falling apart, worship God anyway. Just look at the devil and say hallelujah anyhow, and you're going to discover that all of a sudden, God has put some joy in your life where there had been nothing before. Would you stand with me today? Joy unspeakable and full of glory joy do you ever see women gather around babies what happens I had I had a video clip of my wife I thought about showing it but I I wanted to live through Christmas <laughs> she's on the phone I deleted it don't worry she's on the phone with Vivian our little granddaughter She's on the phone and she's going, He's down there, this baby! He's down there, this baby! He's down there, this little girl! Like, <laughs> Do and Vivian's on the other side, nine months old or ten months old. She's on the other side going, <laughs> She's going to be just like her grandma. And the more Vivian smiled, the more Debbie did it. Do you understand that our emotions, our expressions are given to us by God? I, I promise you joy does not come from the devil. And so what happens is we get, we lose sight of joy because after all, we're grown adults. I mean, how could we possibly come to the house of God and get excited? So we, I went to a church one time, I, I, I got back home, my dad said, how was it? He, he wasn't going to church, but he was encouraging me to go. He said, how was it? I said, dad, I had sung the whole song before they got through the first line. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, but I mean, I'm used to it. Anybody in the house, oh, don't sit there and look at me like you. You know, when you were in the world, you'd hit the dance floor. You thought you was John Travolta. You, get, you didn't care what anybody thought. You got out on the dance floor, man, I was the disco duck. You didn't care. But after you got saved, you let the devil take your joy. I didn't quit dancing. I just changed partners. I'm dancing to a different tune now. It's time to let joy come back in your life. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say, I'm about to get happy. I'm about to get happy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. The secret of joy is it'll bring you strength 
So the next time you feel like you're faltering and you're flailing and you're about to go under, why don't you throw your hands up and start worshiping God? And a boy in Mississippi that had a car wreck, he rolled his truck. I don't know how fast he was going. When we got to the hospital, they'd already told the parents he's not going to live. He's going to die. If he does live, he'll be a vegetable because his brain is swollen and all this stuff being fed to that family. We stood up to pray and Debbie said, wait a minute, man. Said, we're trusting God. We gathered the family together and started praying and all of a sudden things started changing. Doctors came back. He wasn't supposed to be able to talk, but he was talking. He wasn't supposed to be able to walk, but he was walking. Daddy ran down the hall of the hospital and started doing cartwheels right there in the hospital. Why? Because joy, joy, unspeakable and full of glory. This is supposed to be a season of joy. Quit trying to find the next Tickle Me Elmo and start raising your hands and praising God for the reason for the season. Joy. Are you ready? How many of you need some joy in your life today? I want you, I want you to come up front right now if you need some joy in your Look, I know I'm the only thing between you and fried chicken right now. But there's some things more important than fried chicken. Come on up here, come on up here real quick.